Hello, 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 hello. Awesome. Alright, so I think this should be okay. And yeah, I think we should be I think we should be good to go. Maybe. Uh yeah, I, I yeah, it should be, right? Okay. just need to be careful whenever I turn cuz I am like pretty close to the microphone oh, man this fucking chair all right let's struggle shall we as I can be. Keep it clean, fellas. I even have some lemon honey tea now, for one of our start screaming. Roxas versus Vivi. I hope I remember the controls. Jesus Christ. Gauging the distance. Alright, that was too quick. So that's okay. I think I know exactly what I want out of like certain combo traits. I think I want a three-step combo no matter what the three-step strength because I think enemies start to really become super punishing when 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 the fourth installation in the combo starts to transpire it becomes very punishing so I'd rather not facilitate those grounds and those uh, shenanigans. I'm just like letting it all sink into me. I'm just getting ready, preparing my head, and man, I don't know. <laughs> Again? Again? With that, I think I'm starting to understand how to par how to guard against it. I think I have to wait until a certain point and then guard against their flank. Roxas, all right. 
Fight, fight, fight. You really don't remember. It's me. You know, Axel. Axel? Talk about blank with a capital B. Man, oh man. Even the dusks aren't gonna crack this way. Wait a sec. Tell me what's going on. This town is his creation, right? Which means we don't have time for a Q&A. You're coming with me, conscious or not. Then you'll hear the story. What's going on? Hmm. Number 13. Roxas. The Keyblade's chosen one. Okay, fine. You asked for it. That's more like it. Okay, so too early. Too early. Okay. I need to slow down my guard. Which ob it's obvious that I have to slow down my guard. It's just it, it's it's so tempting on my end. Very tempting on my end to just guard immediately. And the guard is has such a unforgiving punishing window of cooldown, quote unquote. Keep it clean, fellas. Okay. Something's wrong. Why isn't my inputs... Something's completely eating my inputs. Right. That was weird. There felt... There was like input delay. Oh, man. 
Okay, I'm starting to understand the tempo. No, 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 no. I was too slow there. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. No, what? I blocked. Tempo is so hard to time. Keep it clean, fellas. It's doable. Not bad, not bad. Alright, 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 alright. That's more like it. Oh, No. 
Oh my god. Keep it clean, fellas. I like it. What? I... How? I wasn't paying attention. I deserve that. Oh. Yeah, I deserve that. Clean, fellas. The reason why I keep on missing that flank is because I'm not getting enough practice guarding against that flank. And because I'm choosing to end that battle as quickly as possible, I'm deliberately de I'm deliberately missing out on that practice, whether that's intentional or not. Ugh, man. That's more like it. 
Dude, I fucking block that. And it doesn't make any- Okay, so that doesn't really make any sense to me because if he's able to throw his, uh, I believe it's a shuriken, if he's able to throw his shuriken at me at that distance and it still toggles my block, I don't understand what goes incorrectly with his regular uh, two-step attack where he toss it, he starts to shift his weight towards me by being light-footed and he tosses his first, I believe his, his right shuriken towards me. I don't understand where I'm blocking but it doesn't toggle my block or trigger my block. I don't, I don't understand that. Not see that. Keep it clean, fellas. So 
was you. Raxus! This man speaks nonsense. Roxas! Don't let him deceive you! Roxas! 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 What? What just happened? Huh? How did I get here? Roxas! Ladies and gentlemen, Roxas! Our new top struggler! Roxas? Holy shit. Oh my god, dude. That was sick. Sweet, sweet victory. That was awesome. Oh man. should be nothing compared to Axel. You too. Play fair now. You're at the top of the bracket. There's only room for one up here. Well, <laughs> may the best man win. <laughs> hey, Ruxet. How about you throw the match for me? Roxas! <coughs> Focus! Let me win, and I'll make it worth your while. Get real! Roxas, our underdog hero, versus Setzer, our defending champion. The winner of this match will be the true champion. That's bragging rights for a whole year, folks. <coughs> Whatever you think is right, you're wrong. And that was a big mistake. My life is a chip in your heart. Time to ante up. Damn, he's he's quick. His uh his recovery is really quick. Trophy from the struggle tournament. It is decorated with four crystals.
as promised. Thanks a ton, Roxas. <laughs> One more treasure for us to share. I've got a present too, for all of us. Whoa. Oh. Uh. who used to hang out with us? Riku? Yeah. I wonder whatever happened to him. I sure miss him. He's far away. But I know we'll see him again. Sure. Of course we will. And the other boy? What other boy? The one who was with Riku and me all the time. We played together on that island. His voice always used to be there. Now it's gone. I can't think of his face or his name. I feel awful about it. So I told myself, I'm not going to the island until I remember everything about him. Are you sure you didn't make him up? Domino? What's happening to me? Who are you? And that's not my name. I'm Kyrie. Kyrie, I know you. You're that girl he likes. Who? Please, a name. I'm Roxas. Okay, Roxas. But can you tell me his name? You don't remember my name? Thanks a lot, Kyrie. Huh? Okay. I guess I can give you a hint. Starts with an S. Are you okay? What's that? A letter. I wrote it yesterday. To the boy I can't remember. I said that no matter where he is, I'll find him. One day. And when I stopped writing, I remember we made a promise. Something important. This letter is where it starts, I know it. Wow. I hope he gets it. He will. Starts with an S. Right? Sora? Restoration at 79%. So, what happened? Namine's encounter with Roxas put his heart in contact with Kairis. And that, in turn, affected Sora. You see? Namine. She's a wonder. 
She wasn't born like other nobodies. She can interfere with the hearts and memories of Sora and those aligned with him. But who's nobody is she? I could tell you. But first, perhaps you could tell me your true name. It's Ansem. <laughs> it's an honor, Ansem. I'm sorry, I have to, like, talk. I think that there is so much, like, there is so much to the start of this game that I forgot about, and I forgot because of all of the miscellaneous installations in the series after Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2, that everything sort of became muddied, everything became sort of, like, frustration towards Tetsuya Nomura and like and the writing team the, the the directing team and like all of what became such a amalgamation of destructive mess regarding the direction of the story as well as the quality of the story I think that my frustrations really culminated from that as time went on but looking back at things like with the with a lot of retrospective hindsight and potentially bias as well. I rather a lot of hindsight bias and a lot of hindsight information that I just didn't have equipped at the time going through the series. I think that all of the foreshadowing, all of the introduction of these characters and a lot, a lot of revelations, I think is so magnanimously genius. And I, I wish that Nomura had an idea of what to do with these particular characters and these these storylines because Roxas his storyline is so tragic it is so heartbreaking it is so it's it's honestly fucking tear jerking because he from the beginning all the way to the end of when he reaches fulfillment because of Sora I, it's just, it is so heartbreaking seeing that quality, quality of writing. Same with um, Ansem in particular, for anyone who's watching that hasn't seen this. His, his, there are certain, uh, there are certain revelatory details that will come forth later regarding why he's there, why this person in front of him laughed. There is there the quality of writing in Kingdom Hearts two, propelling off of Kingdom Hearts one. It is so fucking good. It is so fucking good, and the experience of gameplay, the experience of everything in this game is so fucking good. And it fucking brings me to tears because I I I realize how much I fucking love this series, how much I fucking love this game. God damn. I am so fucking happy that I'm actually tr playing this game again. No way! It's too soon! You can't seriously get rid of him! It's an order. Why do you hesitate? You who has been ruthless towards those who turn their backs on the organization. But it's not like that. He didn't betray us. He can't come back! If he doesn't return, you know what you must do. Or you will face the consequences. Do it, if that's what you want. I'm 
dreaming. But which parts were the dream? Three days left of summer vacation, so don't even mention that assignment. But we agreed we'd get it finished today. Yesterday, I fell off the station tower, didn't I? You wouldn't be here if you did. But man, that was a close one. Stop changing the subject. <sighs> okay already. You win. We'll do the homework. Stupid independent study. So. Anybody got any bright ideas for a topic? Maybe we could study the stuff that's happening to me. You know, the dreams and the, the guys in white. Forget it. Why? You know, things have been weird with you in the town since the photos were stolen, right? Well, tomorrow, we're all gonna search the town and find out what's been going on. Lots of people are helping out. All that for me? I'll go get some ice cream. There is this strange rumor going around. Want to hear it? No. You know the stone steps at Sunset Station? We use them all the time without even thinking about it, but this is the weird part. The steps count different going up and going down. Wait, isn't this the situation where the starting point of which they are counting is d is going to be it's going to confuse the person. It's a diff it's a it's a perspective of referential points, isn't it? I feel like reading all that. Uh, save. Okay, cool. Get on a train and go to Central Station. I think the town line's still free of charge. So the station. But yeah, like I really do think that this game is so ridiculously good, and I wish that they maintained that this quality of writing, this quality of direction. And it's so sad, like, looking at everything from beyond. Like, I'm talking about, like, the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, as well as, like, the termination of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Just having that background information and then looking at everything that has transpired, I'm like, man, like, I just... I don't know if I want to go back. I don't know if I want to sit through Nomura's indecisive shenanigans when it comes down to the story because now the end of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross is supposed to tie into after Kingdom Hearts 3. And I'm like, man, like, I just don't know because it's always a gamble with Nomura. It's always a gamble to see if he is not going to be like a notorious just it's always a gamble to see if his shenanigans are not going to be notorious towards the direction of the story, the quality of writing with his characters and I I've tried so hard to just move on from like my 
my antagonism towards him as a writer because I I want 99% of the time despise what he has done with the quality of writing regarding the direction of the series. It makes me sad because I used to really, really, really hold this series in high, high regard. It makes me sad that like... The time I, has come. Our hunt for the Seven Wonders begins. Whoa. Find new rumors already? Nothing on Market Street. You twerps aren't gonna scoop us. We're going to the terrace with you. Hainer, it's not a race. Well, it is now. <laughs> Come on, we can all go. Aren't these the steps you talked about? The ones that count different going up and down? Hmm. Actually, it's the stupidest thing ever, but... What? Rai's the one who counted. He's like, every time I count, it's different. You know? <laughs> so, he just counted wrong? All right, so I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. So it's just shenanigans. But yeah, to finish my note from earlier, it it just makes me sad because I I I keep forgetting that I actually do love this series. There and I we when it comes down to this subject and idea of love, people have to remember that the people that we choose to love and choose to care about, we have to remember that just as it is the same with them, that we cannot choose certain aspects about them that we love and dislike and like or hate. We cannot do that because that is fundamentally not the grounds of what the testament of what love really is. Love is accepting the who they are, regardless of how many flaws they have, and supporting them to the best of our abilities so that they can reach the time, the fruition of all their efforts to become more than who they are and more than what their flaws are so that they can reach the, the pillar, the testament of improvement. And that is not easy to do with people. And that's not easy to do with, like, Entities and and how do I say this entities that are products of human desires and ideologies and philosophies that all intersect in this beautiful product of a game let alone a series and it is so difficult to grapple with the idea that regardless of how much love I have for this series I still 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 have so much critical commentary and honestly critical hatred in certain aspects of this this series no matter how much i love this series and it's it took me so long to like grapple with that undulating field of shenanigans i i don't know how else to describe it. it's just a bunch of shenanigans
Um, with that being said, I do want to get a. I had. I just had some coffee delivered, so I'm just gonna get that, and I'll be back in like five minutes. I'm just gonna put the be right back screen, but I'll still be like right here. Let me just see what the fuck Pence has to say. Is his name even Pence? Hainer Olet Pence. All right, whatever. So let me just put the BR back screen, and I'll be, I will be right back. Like, give me like five minutes. I just need to get my coffee.
Okay, sorry about that. I just caught up with a little bit of the family. Okay, I got medium ice caramel latte. Uh, and instead of having regular milk, I asked for cream, cause for me, I'm, as I get older, I'm getting more and more lactose intolerant. And dude, I, I just don't play that game anymore. It's fucking dangerous. It fucking, like hours after that I ingest whatever it is that will trigger the onset of my lactose intolerance, man, I pay the price. I get fucking punished. Do you know about the bag? Alright, so I'm here. A friend from beyond the wall. And you know, at the end of the valley, a ball will come out of the wall. Huh. What I'm trying to do, besides, like, obviously completing the mission... Uh, I think that's it. I have to find it within myself to make sure that... I am almost positive that it, it they are... That they are... Allowing the player to find chests and, like... I don't want to miss out on anything. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, my suspicions were correct. And I'm almost positive that we've had the chance prior to this to get these chests, maybe. Or maybe I'm just imagining it. And and my paranoia was just ju justified. Maybe not paranoia, just suspicions. I think for that, I can't get that chest until I get high jump or double jump or maybe you fucking guard yo go oh. oh my god okay cool Sick. Another chest. So I hope that is it. No, it is not. Alright, so I now hope that is it. Oh no, this is it.
So like, all of that, that's that that right there is purely fo foreshadowing, 100%, 100%. So, like, it's interesting to uh, look at the circumstances that engulf Roxas, as well as look at the circumstances that led to this this particular event and circumstances that he is currently in and look at everything that transpires afterwards because um how do i say this it is very interesting to see how he is trying to grapple with struggling to figure out why things are happening to him the way that they are as well as trying to figure out why they are happening in the first place to me when i was growing up to me i identified with roxas so much because i didn't understand how to form my own personal identity versus what my social identity was during the course of my life at, like particularly when things started to really get the ball rolling after the age of nine when this game came out and i had the luxury to play it because of uh, other family members having the game i had i felt a resonation or i felt resonated with roxas because i was struggling so fucking hard in incoming years to see and understand who i really am and I thought I did finally reach the the zenith, the apotheosis of who I am at the when I graduated high school, and I realized no, I don't know shit. I, I don't know who I am. I didn't know who I was, and things didn't really start to click until like after college, and things didn't really start to really sit well with me and establish a solidified consistent stable foundation until i became like 25 26 and that's fucking insane to me that's fucking insane to me like holy shit that's such a fucking long journey So I think that in this particular set of circumstances that Roxas and company are in, uh, and if we look at how Axel as well as that figure that showed up, we can start to pick apart and piece things together where there are infiltrators, there are people trying to break into this realm. And the... The situation that Roxas and company are in, they are, they don't, Roxas in particular doesn't really understand because this is all he knows thus far. The current Roxas that we know, this is all he knows and it is very difficult and I understand from a perspective of naivety and innocence, it is hard to fathom the idea that there is something beyond these walls this realm, this town, where one originates from. It is so difficult to fathom the idea that there's something else out there. And it is parallel to the idea of what, for example, the journey of like modern uh, animated series, such as one of my, two of my all time favorites in particular, one of them being Attack on Titan, and another being Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga is quite literally my top one anime of all fucking time, even compared to the classics that I've held in near and dear to me, being uh, Cowboy Bebop and what's it called? Uh, Steins Gate, One Piece, uh, Samurai Champloo. Uh, God. 
there's so many animated series that I can't even recall anymore because I've changed so much as a person that at the time of which I loved those series so much. Cowboy Bebop, I would say, is within my top three. Top two is Attack on Titan, and my top one, my number one, is Villain Saga. All of these particular animated series, the reason why I, ha I hold these in my top three is because they quite literally are partitions of my values, my philosophies, my ideologies, my struggles, and quite literally my journey in life. And I hold these this trifecta so near and dear to me because if I want people to experience a story, a multitude of stories, and then a multitude of characters and writing that delivers everything from inside of me from the day I was born all the way to now, I though that trifecta is something I recommend to the fullest capacity from the bottom of my fucking heart. And it's such a shame that, like, some people just don't watch anime. I'm just like, okay, man. Like, alright, cool. Whatever. What? Oh, no! 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 That's- oh my god, that's awful. That's actually awful. I think there's a scene here that's included that's strictly based off of a- uh, rather strictly in the version of Final Mix Kingdom Hearts 2. I will keep this stream going as much as I can before dinner. Once dinner hits, I have to like, I do have to end the stream. But I will be back afterwards, but it won't be Kingdom Hearts, it'll be Death Stranding tonight. Which will roughly latest be 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern. Oh, okay, 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 I understand. This is a dog, right? This should be the dog. Yeah! Isn't this the dog from, uh, that ad animated Disney film where they eat the spaghetti and then, like, slurp on it and then they kiss? Whoa. weird. Fucking nasty. It is your boy, Moaner from the Tunnels. Oh, this motherfucker. Whoa! 
what? What the fuck is going on? So the Oh fuck. Okay, so Yeah, I want to double down earlier, not just using retrospective uh, retrospective bias or hindsight information. Um I I think that the those particular enemies it seems that using information that uh, Axel has brought forth dusks those are enemies called dusks those dusks are used as ways to infiltrate this town this particular realm and it seems as though those dusks are taking on the form of Vivi and it doesn't I don't even know if Vivi was real in this particular realm. I don't know if there was that this information, this veil of Vivi in this realm was ever an existence that was as qualitatively full of streamlined integrity compared to like entities such as Pence, Hainer, Olet, as well as other viable entities that are close to Roxas to help maintain stability. And I don't think that Vivi as an entity being used as an infiltrator for these dusks for I assume Axel and company I don't think Vivi was ever a stable medium or entity in the proximity of Roxas. And that's pretty interesting to observe and honestly pretty scary considering the circumstances that are surrounding Roxas's precarious situation. You know, that last wonder wasn't exactly wonderful. I understand. Say no more. But this next one's gonna be really great. Wonder number six. We got another lead. The ghost train mystery. Everybody knows about wonder number six. Yeah, well I didn't. Did you find out where the train runs? You can see it from Sunset Hill. It's honestly, like, it really is cool 
being able to go through series again and being able to like have that sort of those moments where everything sort of just clicks and like one can understand the the sort of intentions that the directors as well as the writers involved had when combining and unifying their harmonious fashion at which they will un sort of converge on a point of not singularity but a point of unified effort to create the product of everything that this game is and whatever else whatever other series that like people are able to craft well it, it's it's such it's so beautiful if the rumors are true it'll be here any minute or they say the train is empty no driver no conductor no passengers, no return. We've got to make it to the beach next year. Yeah, we better get jobs the second vacation starts. Good afternoon, slackers. What are you doing out here? What do you care? I don't. Tell me anyway. We're waiting for the ghost train. Waiting for the ghost train. <laughs> Why does looking at you always tick me off? I don't know. Maybe it's destiny. Wait. I think... This is my theory. A lot of all these particular scenarios that are surrounding Roxas, they are they are adapting to his memories. They are adapting to all of his, his his experiences. This particular conversation between him and whatever his name is, it is reminiscent of a conversation between him, Roxas, and something that has transpired prior to this game in the timeline of this series. Something that transpired in Birth by Sleep all the way to later on, not just in this point of time, but another parallel later in this game when certain developments transpire and another character pops up to have a confrontation with someone else. This fucking conversation foreshadows that and this conversation references that particular confrontation back in Birth by Sleep. Holy fuck. Like... Because, because, because certain developments in Roxas references the development back in Birth by Sleep. That's fucking insane. There's just no way this wasn't deliberate. Destiny. In that case, let's be friends. I don't feel like cooperating with Destiny. When have you ever cooperated with anything? I know. Tomorrow. Look! It's really true. And there's really no one aboard. What's the catch? There's gotta be a catch, right? Then it's real? Let's go to the station! Let's go in. What? Um, you'll get hurt. Huh? The train will be arriving shortly.
Come on. A train came from the beach. Th there was no driver, right? Let's go. Right? I'm sorry, I, I need to say something. It's also interesting because the fact that they, he, they keep talking about the beach, this is in relation to... Uh, the reason why I keep... I am doubling down on what I said before about how the circumstances are catering towards Roxas and his memories and like the circumstances that are undulating around him is because that topic of the conversation of the beach, it's parallel to 358 over two days. And the events that transpire there. And um, I, I also want to bring in some sort of like insight about this whole scenario that of the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2 referencing the uh, Roxas' story and all the way up to now. I believe this is a fundamental utility of elements that contribute to a good horror story. A, ho a good horror genre being applied to a story because from the beginning we get to see and we are introduced to this beautiful town this beautiful setting these beautiful characters and this beautiful protagonist only to see that something is awry we see that something is not in something is haunting this premise where we are quite literally being haunted and we are getting chased there are enemies there are we are being infiltrated and we are see as the protagonist we are seeing events that aren't necessarily there but they're in the background why is it that our compatriots don't see anything are we really here are we really there are is our existence tangible are our thoughts tangible it's so it's really interesting to see these particular events starting to rise bubble and boil because sooner or later something's gonna erupt something is gonna pop something's just going to explode and we are starting to see the rise as well as an inverse to that rise the descent we are quite literally seeing the rise of hell something rising to get Roxas and we are starting to see the descent of Roxas's journey and holy shit I think this is such a well written beginning to the game as much as I flack on the dialogue as much as I flack on the shenanigans of the the supporting cast holy shit this this section is so fucking it's so fucking good holy shit let's go home and work on the paper the rumors were bogus. The end. We can still make it sound good if we write about all the work we did. But what about the last one? The seventh wonder? Who cares? I do. Come on, Pence. Whatever. Roxas. <sighs> it's at that haunted mansion. It's so weird that, like, I'm utilizing certain terms, like, haunted, haunting, and now we're going to a haunted mansion. It's so coincidental and weird, and it's... I really do think that the writing of this game is phenomenal. Like, almost, like at least 8.59 out of 10 the writing of this the entirety of this game in particular and man i just i don't i don't know like
Sandlot? Oh. Alright, gotcha. Man. I... I don't know. It, this game is... I can't believe how good this game actually is. And this is only like the beginning section. This is quite literally the prologue to the entirety of this game. The camera feels so good to navigate just strictly from a now like a discussion on gameplay. Like there's so much in this game that just feels so good. And I don't know what happened. Like, what happened after? You know something? Whoa. We were gonna check the mansion out tomorrow. It is the most suspicious place. Right. Even Cypher's gang was gonna help. Cypher? Yeah, Hainer asked him to. So, what are we looking for? Well, they say there's a girl who appears at the second floor window, even though no one's lived here for years. Roxas. Namine? This is... me? And Axel's here too. You are best friends. Very funny. Don't you want to know the truth? About who you really are? No one knows me better than me. Of course. But, I don't get what's been happening lately. You know these three, don't you? Yeah. Sora, Donald, and Goofy. They're from the dreams. About a year ago, some things happened. And I had to take apart the memories chained together in Sora's heart. But now... I'm putting them all back exactly the way they were. It's taken me a long time, but pretty soon, Sora will be his old self again. The process has been affecting you too, Roxas. You mean, the dreams? Yes. You and Sora are connected. And in order for Sora to become completely whole again, he needs you. Me? What for? You hold half of what he is. He needs you, Roxas. Namine? Namine. Who are you? I'm a witch with power over Sora's memories and those around him. A witch? That's what Diz called me. But I don't know why I have this power. I just do. I'm not even sure there's a right way for me to use it. Hmm. I can't help you there. It's funny. Suddenly, I, I feel like 
I don't know myself at all. I guess I would like to know. What do you know about me that I don't? You... You were never supposed to exist, Roxas. What? How could you even say such a thing? Even if it were true? I'm sorry. I guess some things really are better left unsaid. I think that... <laughs> God damn! I think that Roxas' story is so fucking heartbreaking. And I think that, like, looking at his story, there is this series of death to innocence, death to naivety, and... A for in in this case, it's a foreshadowing to his eventual loss of life. And God fucking damn, dude, it is so fucking sad. It is so fucking heartbreaking, dude. Like, I don't know how anyone in this series, like, a fan of this series, cannot look at Roxas and just fucking cry. His story is so fucking heartbreaking! Like, holy shit, dude. Oh, God. Roxas! Roxas! Huh? Did you see her? Yeah. Watch the window. Closely. Ah, oh, lame. That's just the curtains moving. There must be a draft somewhere. I'm surprised this old place even has curtains. Yeah. Well, let's head back to the usual spot. Hainer and a letter waiting. Hey guys, how'd it go? The girl in the window turned out to be a curtain flapping in the wind. I figured as much. The report's already done. All right. So, wanna go find Hainer? He's probably at the station. You know, we only have two more days together. Huh? Summer vacation, remember? Oh. Right. Tomorrow, we search the town. Next day's the fair. The last day of summer. Don't say that. You'll give me an ulcer. Not if you explode from all that ice cream first. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you show him the train? Because he missed the trip to the beach. Hmm. That's almost kind of you. No. What about you? Are the holes in your memory starting to fill in? Yes. The haze is clearing. The same thing is happening to everyone who had ties to Sora. Very soon. To them, he'd be like a good friend who's gone away for a year. I've waited and now I want to know, what is it that you want? Revenge. Revenge. Now for the finishing touches. First, we must dispose of Namine. She did a splendid job with Sora, but it's high time she disappeared. Roxas isn't the only one who was never meant to exist. Take care of it, Ansem. Rescue. 
saturation at 97%. Gorge, is that all that's left of the worlds taken by the Heartless? Those worlds will be restored if we beat Ansem, right? But if we do beat him, and all these worlds become restored and disconnected, what's gonna happen to this place, and to us? All worlds begin in darkness, and all so end. The heart is no different. You see, darkness is the heart's true essence. That's not true! The heart may be weak, and sometimes it may even give in. But I've learned that deep down there's a light that never goes out. Kingdom Hearts! Fill me with the power of darkness! You're wrong. I know now, without a doubt, Kingdom Hearts is light! Sora, let's close this door for good. Take care of her. A lot of this is so painful. This, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I have to fucking just keep pausing and talking about this. But, like, when, when Olette was talking with the company and Roxas, she said that there's only two days left to the summer vacation. And that is a direct reference to 358 over two days. And how the relation of that game ties into this game. And how Chains, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, how that ties into this game. And it is, for me, from a, a, a very ideological and philosophical perspective on nostalgia, to me, this is just my perspective on what nostalgia is. I think that nostalgia is one of the most God, poisonous. One of the most poisonous, toxic, intoxicating serums to anyone's memories because it gives us these, it paints this, this rose-tinted glasses on us and it makes us remember nothing but good when we look back. And it makes us think that when we look back on these memories, that we hold near and dear to us, that we didn't even know, we forget. We forget that the struggles, the pain, the suffering, the punishment, everything that lies beneath all of those good things that are associated with those memories. In this, this series, all that whole section, it was nothing but nostalgia. It was giving us a sense of familiarity where it is now intersecting as the chain of memories that is the past coming back to haunt us going forward to see what is going to happen with the protagonist, the new protagonist that we are acting as. And oh my god, the intersection between the past and the present and the future is, it is just so it is so well written, dude. I can't handle it. Holy fuck, man. Now, now what do we do? We've got to find Riku and King Mickey. But, uh, where do we start looking for that there door to the light? You know? Gorge, that's the king's seal. Hey, have you seen King Mickey? Let's go!
I've been to see him. He looks a lot like you. Who are you? Why do you have the Keyblade? Shut up! Again, I, I want to talk about that, that interaction right there. That is from 358 over 2 days. And I want to talk about... For anyone who, like, watches this from the future, or whoever's watching this that hasn't, like played those games and may not ever want to bother that whole interaction right there like i have to talk about the symbolism there that character in the gray hair for i a spoiler alert it's riku and he has his own journey that is so 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 heartbreaking to talk about and his journey by itself is so it's it is an apotheosis of like someone who struggles with the idea that they are trying to come to terms with the sins of their past and trying to come to terms with the, what they've done to their friends because of the war path that they were on and holy fuck it, it as my life developed i not only resonated with roxas and his character his journey his arc i also resonated with fucking riku because like holy shit like, I've done so much fucking questionable garbage as a human being that I cannot find it within myself to go back to the people, the good, the very, 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 very few people that I believe are fundamentally good, good people. I cannot find it within myself to go back to them yet. Because I just don't know if I have anything to show. Ugh. And it sucks. It fucking blows, dude. Ugh. And in that fight in particular, we look at the descent of Riku, who grabbed Oblivion, who is, in my interpretation, Oblivion is the representation of Riku. And Oathkeeper, I believe that's Oathkeeper of which... Roxas obtained is the representation of Kyrie in 352 over yeah no 358 over two days the 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 meanings and the symbolism got bended a little bit to cater towards the narratives that was in there but originally I'm pretty sure that Oblivion was supposed to represent Riku in his character arc and Kai on uh, Oathkeeper to represent uh Kyrie and her character arc and when we you when we put that to just have to, for my sake for for me to rationalize what's going on for Riku he has his descent into madness that's what gets him sent to oblivion hence why he is represented by that oblivion keyblade with Kairi she is the pillar of light the pillar of light in Sora's life as well as the pillar of light in everything who she represents as how she's written. She is the Oath Keeper. And she will keep her oath to Sora. And come back to him to find him. <laughs> god, this series is so fucking... Oh my god, this game is so fucking good. It is so fucking heartbreaking. These characters, holy shit, man. And my god... It, it hurts me even more because I, I fucking relate to so much of this fucking writing. Holy shit, man.
Man, I could not sleep last night. Guys? Huh? One film that I want to reference really fucking badly is a film called You Were Never Really Here or You Were Never Really... Yeah, You Were Never Really Here. Joaquin Phoenix, exceptional, phenomenal actor. One of my, one of my all-time favorite people to just observe his performance in every... in any of his films. And in that film in particular, it... For me, when I watched it, I felt so uncomfortable, so... in, in so much pain. Because for me, it gave me a sort of a reflection of like the sins of my past. And for me, I didn't know how to process what I was watching because it just, I wanted to run. I wanted to escape. I just didn't want to watch it. But I, I forced myself to watch it. I forced myself to go through it. And for me, I when I was going through college i even wanted to t like i didn't know i just didn't know who to go for help go to for help to understand like what happened with me when i watched that movie that film i tried to talk about it with like a therapist at the over there and i wanted to know like what the fuck was i what, what happened with me at that time like why was i so so incapacitated for that night why did i feel so uncomfortable and it's because it quite literally reflected who, what I felt and who I felt as with the the pains of my past the reason why I'm talking about that and referencing this here is because it's quite literally like Roxas was never really there and it just reflects what conversation that he had with Naminé that he was never supposed to exist and holy fuck that is so fucking sad oh my god dude oh, Jesus Christ man Jesus Christ Look at what it's come to. I've been given these icky orders to destroy you if you refuse to come back with me. We're best friends, right? Sure, but I'm not getting turned into a dusk for... Wait a sec. You remember now? E yeah. Great! But, you know, gotta make sure and all, so, uh... Um... What's our boss's name? Oh, can't believe this. Yeah. 
and this is where everything starts to pay off with all of the elements of horror that has Roxas to the mansion the time has come Painter Pence Olette Where everything starts to converge on the point of singularity, where everything is being destroyed. This this cataclysmic event, this event horizon where he's now being absorbed into this this entity of what is metaphorically a black hole. Roxas doesn't have any control. He is quite literally being dictated by his circumstances. And it's just like <laughs> It's like, are you fucking kidding me? It's like, holy fuck, man. The Roxas that I know is long gone. Fine. I see how it is. And it sucks because clearly there is history between Roxas and Axel. I don't know if 358 over two days and Chain of Memories came out before two. I don't remember the publication dates. I know that Kingdom Hearts 1 was 2002 and Kingdom Hearts 2 was 2005. I don't remember the publication dates for Chain of Memories and 358 over two days. Um... It just sucks, like, watching the descent, watching the descent of, like, everything, and seeing that, like, Roxas, he's, he's fucking screaming for help, quite literally, he's screaming for help, and, like, holy shit, it's like, why isn't anyone going to save him? Why is no one going to save him? And it fucking breaks my goddamn heart because like we see this in the real world where like people feel so fucking invisible when they are the ones who need help the fucking most. And then when they actually reach out for help, holy shit, no one fucking listens! It's so heartbreaking. You fucking ass check. No, 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 no. I fucking said ass track. I was trying to say ass crack. Fucking... 
Nice. Sick. pretty tough like easy to deflect and all that but once you get caught in that chain it's over don't call me and then lock me out I am that keyblade rather that that particular weapon that this person is holding Ansem it is so symbolic to his fucking journey and oh my god I think it's called way to dawn and holy shit man it is so symbolic of this person's fucking journey oh god like Fuck you. Like, it's that person's journey from the boundaries of hell that they have crossed into for the mission that they had on mind of redemption from the sins that they have committed it's it's so it is just so heartbreaking i i don't know what else to say <laughs> God, this this series, Kingdom Hearts One, going on to Kingdom Hearts Two, as well as the stories of, well, the better portions of the story of 358 over two days and Chain of Memories, the stories and how they interact with certain character arcs. It's just from from the. Uh, beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1 to the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 it's a story of so much heartbreak and it's just so it's insane to me I think that over there is the the room sorry I got a cough I 
I think that room is where we're supposed to go. And I think uh, over here is where... Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Are you fucking kidding me? Suck a dick. Oh! Are you... Holy shit, that scared the living asshole out of me. So, over here, I believe, is Nominee's room. Mine's made up. Why did the Keyblade choose me? I have to know. You can't turn on the organization! Organization 13. They're a bad group. Bad or good? I don't know. They're a group of incomplete people who wish to be whole. To that end, they're desperately searching for something. What? Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Funny? It's just... I think... I've been running away from the question I really want to ask. What's gonna happen to me now? Just tell me that. Nothing else really matters anymore. You are... Nominate! There's no knowledge that has the power to change your fate. Even if it doesn't, I want to know. I have the right to know. A nobody doesn't have a right to know. Nor does it even have the right to be. But what is a nobody? Diz, we're out of time. Too many nobodies. Roxas. Nobodies like us are only half a person. You won't disappear. You'll be whole. I'll disappear? No further outbursts. No, you won't disappear. You'll... Wait. <sighs> Roxas, we will meet again. And then we can talk about everything. I may not know it's you. And you may not know it's me, but we will meet again, someday soon. I promise! Let her go! Nominate! Man. The person who is in front of Diz, Ansem, we get to see and observe sooner or later why he is doing what he's doing against Roxas and why he's supporting Diz. Why they seem to look like the antagonists. Why they seem to look like... Why they're doing what they're doing. And quite frankly, that person, Ansem, he is doing everything he can to complete a mission that he has. And just like what Roxas has stated, nothing else really matters anymore. And that is a fundamental premise for anyone who has a certain mission in life. 
a mission that they must complete. Nothing really matters. Nothing else really matters. It is upon the duty of these people, these particular, the weight that they carry on their shoulders, that they're carrying into the fruition of the end that they're trying to reach. They have to keep going. They have to keep going no matter what. And that, that is a testament to their will. And holy, it is, it is fucking, it's just so heartbreaking. Fuck you guys, I'm, I'm leaving. Dog, what the fuck was that? That scared the living just shit out of me. This ugh, fucking stupid ass fucking piece of shit. I hope I can get to the the I, I, okay, I think I have. Maybe. If we can maintain the simulated town until Namine finishes chaining together Sora's memories, what will happen to Roxas? He holds half of Sora's power within him. In the end, he'll have to give it back. Until then, he'll need another personality to throw off his pursuers. Poor thing. It's the fate of a nobody.
a series for anyone who's watching, I want to recommend you a certain parallel to the idea of what has been expressed so beautifully in Roxas's journey in this game so far. The death of innocence. <coughs> the death of naivety. And soon, the death, the loss of his life. Because, to me, those that trifecta right here is an idea that is so, so magnificently portrayed and conveyed in a series called Dark. It is a German show. It is three seasons, seasons, and oh my god. The series to me, I thought the first season was like a 7. Good. 7 out of 10. Good. The second season, 8 out of 10. Really good. The final season, 9 out of 10. Like, great. Phenomenal. Amazing. And oh my god. Oh my god. This journey that Roxas is facing and struggling with. That trifecta of the loss of innocence, the loss of naivety, and soon as what the conversations he's been sitting through and are foreshadowing, the loss of his life. It is just so... is so heartbreaking and I I just the fact that Nomura was able to that he was able to nail that in just the prologue of this game like what do you mean this level of writing how how was he able to conduct this how was he able to direct this and then we look at everything after I'm like bro you're a shell of yourself. I'm sorry. <sighs> Man. The reason why I'm so critical towards the series, no pun intended, is because, like, there's just so much that this game, from Kingdom Hearts 1 to Kingdom Hearts 2, and the questionable installation in between, that, that had, there's so much good that has been facilitated and written and done to a, a magnanimous degree, and, it's like, how did it become such a former shell of itself as afterwards? Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> 
simply amazing, Roxas. Axel. You really do remember me this time. I'm so flattered! Oh no. But you're too late! Oh no, what? I need to fight better in what's... I need to fight better in the prior fight. I can't use any potions because I need to use potions for this fight. Oh man, that's rough. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Okay, so I have to understand. What is it about that attack that I can't block anymore? Simply amazing, Roxas. Come here, I'll make Do it I have stop. no choice but to succumb to the damage that is on the floor? That was actually much easier than I thought. This is so fucking sad. You get on their bad side and they'll destroy you! No one would miss me. That's not true. I would. Axel. Let's meet again in the next life. Yeah, I'll be waiting. Silly. Just because you have a next life, I want to talk about Death Stranding and how it references a parallel to this game, not necessarily directly to this game, but a certain idea of a philosophy about death and reincarnation, the body and the soul. In Death Stranding, there is this idea called the Ha and the Ka. One of them, 
I believe the ha is the body and the ka is the soul. And it's a certain parallel that I want to reference because in this particular instance, the it's talking about that conversation is talk and this whole idea of like and nominate ta nominate talking about like you'll become whole again, you won't disappear. You're it's almost like she's saying your soul is not going to disappear. You're gonna come back to your body, quote unquote. You your your ka is not going to disappear. You'll return to your your ha. All this fucking linguistic nonsense that fucking Death Stranding is talking about, but like it's almost like talking about the idea of like there will be reincarnation and rebirth in the flames of death that Roxas is walking into and god it is just the same thing with Axel holy shit this whole thing just sucks it's so heartbreaking this whole thing between them like how like for any fan of Kingdom Hearts I don't understand how they not fucking just break down crying from this entire thing this whole section and this is only the prologue oh god oh god man It's so... God, it is just so... This whole... <gasps> what the fuck? This game, this game, this prologue is not mean spirited at all, but it discusses the idea of like, like partitions of ourselves that we see in other people, partitions of ourselves that like we never expected to see elsewhere in the world through other people. And I, I for me, how I conduct my journey in life is that I've completely disregarded everything and everyone and m my who I used to be and threw everything behind me and abandoned my past because I couldn't stand the idea that people were trying to fix me and not support me and I was like that fucking hurts that fucking hurts how can you look at me like I'm some sort of fucking broken doll <sighs> and for me, like going forward, when I started to finally reach out and meet people that felt like partitions of who I am, I, f I was able to finally understand that I wasn't a fucking broken toy, a broken doll. I'm like, holy fuck, like, if I didn't do what I did... And I'm not justifying what I did. I, but I, I didn't do what I did to be who I am today. And meet the people who are quite literally part, feel like partitions of who I am. Who I resonate with in life. I just don't know like where I would be. So much of life. So much of life. Is just trying to find people who are worth it 
worth living for. And just people who are worth being with. And I don't think I would have found myself if it hadn't been for these people that I met. God fucking damn it. I'm so fucking lucky. I'm so fucking lucky to have these fucking people in my life. God damn. At last, the key blades chosen one. Who are you talking to? Me? Or Sora? To half of Sora, of course. You reside in darkness. What I need is someone who can move about the realm of light and destroy Organization 13. Why? Who are you? I am a servant of the world. <laughs> and if I'm a servant, then you should consider yourself a tool at best. Was that... Was that supposed to be a joke? Cause I'm not laughing! Ugh. My apologies. This is only a data-based projection. I hate you so much. You should share some of that hatred with Sora. He's far too nice for his own good. No! My heart belongs to me! Sora. You're lucky. Looks like my summer vacation is over. When, when people look at themselves in the mirror and they see a reflection of who they are, are they seeing themselves? Are they seeing the better half of themselves? Are they seeing who they really are? Or are they seeing the worst version of who they think they are? And it's like, holy fuck, that, that scenario that scene was so fucking symbolic it's almost like Roxas was looking at the light of who he is his better half quote unquote and it's almost as if just based off of contextual references off of what Diz has said it's almost like Roxas is quite literally the darker half of Sora. The hatred, the darkness, the anger. Oh my god, dude! It is so heartbreaking, dude!
Sora! Who's there? Sora! Sora, wake up! Some nap. You mean we were asleep? I guess we must have been, or I don't think we'd be so drowsy. When do you think we went to sleep? Let's see. We defeated Ansem. Yep. Restored peace to the world. Found Kairi. Oh yeah. And then we went to look for Riku. I think that's right so far. Fun what does your journal say, Jiminy? Gee, there's only one sentence. Thank nominate. Hmm, I wonder who that is. Slap Uh, well, what do you say we find out where we are? I don't think that I'd want to look into reading any of this because I, ugh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't care. Like it's just too much. <laughs> it's just way too much. I, I, uh, I don't know. <sighs> so, I actually let's see, let's see what's happening. So, a series that I would like to recommend for anyone who really cares about, like, Sora as a person, a character, as well as how he's written to be, like, this fucking, this undulating vector of light, his never-ending journey to be such a positive force upon his friends, upon his loved ones, if people really liked that and really enjoyed the character arc of Roxas, I highly recommend a series called Hunter Hunter, Hunter x Hunter, particularly the 2011 version. There is the protagonist, and oh my god, dude. Like, he is Sora and Roxas combined into a vessel of a very just tenacious force and I highly recommend anyone who enjoys this series Kingdom Hearts as well as how these characters are written particularly Sora to look into Hunter x Hunter 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 2011 fucking it's it's I revisit that series beyond a, a tangible amount of times that I can reference it is so good. Well written, well directed fights, well written choreography. Oh my god, dude. And like, Diz mentioned revenge, right? We will, we will walk through the entirety of this game, and I will commit to the idea that I want to finish the fuck out of this game, even after I have to go through heaven and hell because of its critical mode. 
but Diz is a character that is reflected really well in one of the characters in Hunter x Hunter, Hunter Hunt, Hunter Hunter 2011. And, oh my god, it's like, it's as if what Diz would be if hell broke loose. You know, I think I've been to this town. What's the town? Hmm. Guess I must have imagined it. Nothing? Just wondering what was back here. Now you know. This is our spot. Um... What? You're new around here, right? I'm Pence. Hayner. Nice to meet you. But we got stuff to do, so catch you later. My name's Alette. Hey, did you finish up the summer homework yet? Independent studies are the worst, huh? Homework? Hey, what are your names? Oh, sorry. Uh, we're Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Hey there. Sora, Donald, Goofy, we just met someone who was looking for you. He sure seemed in a hurry. He had a black coat on, so I couldn't see his face. But he had these big round ears. Where'd you see him? At the station. The station, thanks. Well, you better get back to that assignment. Later. Oh boy, the kids trying to find us. Yeah, let's get to the station. So, just one last bit before I depart, I want to talk one more time about the prologue of this, of this game. It sets the tone, it sets the rigidity of the foundation of which this game and its story will propel off of, and it sets a fundamental undulating fire beneath the grounds of which our protagonists have come back to and now will be able to use to set ablaze the path they are using to go forward. And we can now properly have a perfect, nearly perfect frame of reference to continue in this journey of light. And my god, I am so fucking happy that I chose to come back and revisit this game. Cause goddamn, I didn't think I'd be so fucking emotional. And I didn't think that there is so much in this game that would be so fucking therapeutic for me. Goddamn. <sighs> that being said, I want to take a break break for dinner chill relax and then tonight in roughly two hours i'd say at most i will play some death stranding so yeah uh whoever chose to stay here through a majority of the time of me fucking just yelling my heart out thank you you're the fucking best and, uh, yeah, I'll be back tonight. <laughs>